At least two people died when hundreds of Afghans rushed the tarmac at Kabul airport in this scene, holding on to an American military plane just as it took off. Now, the Taliban took control of the capital city this weekend, something that the president said was just an outside chance just a month ago. And he blamed leaders there, like President Ghani, who fled before the country's quick collapse. Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. Mr. Ghani insisted that the Afghan forces would fight, but obviously he was wrong. At least 5,000 U.S. troops are on their way to help evacuate thousands of U.S. citizens and Afghan allies. President Biden also allocating $500 million to help with Afghan resettlement. And the crisis is unfolding nearly 20 years after the U.S. first entered the country in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, causing some to claim the U.S. is in more danger now than ever before. Afghanistan's fall also been difficult for many veterans who served. Washington Governor Jay Inslee sent a message today saying in part, quote, the concerning news from Afghanistan does not diminish the respect for those Americans whose dedication and sacrifice gave the Afghan people a two decade long opportunity to build a stable and fair minded country. And the sacrifice includes the nearly 2,500 American service members killed in Afghanistan over the last two decades. One of them, a local man whose final resting place is at Willamette National Cemetery. His family spoke with our Jenny Young tonight. Jenny joining us live now. What did they share with you, Jenny? Oh, Liz, Jeff, it was definitely an emotional interview, and I know I speak for our photographer, uh, Taylor Cantrell, um, who also worked on this story when we just say we're so thankful that they took the time to talk to us on an emotional day. It was incredibly emotional watching for them, watching what happened over the weekend. We are so grateful that they sat down to tell their son's story today. The motto for the Green Berets is De Oppressa Liber, or translated to free the oppressed. For Wendell Pelham and his family, there will never be a day that goes by that they don't miss this man, John Alexander Pelham, a beloved son, grandson, brother, uncle, and specialist in the U.S. Army. John's military career was very short, but his family takes pride in the fact that it was very impactful. When you look at the number of commendations that he received for the length of time that he was in service, it just doesn't happen. I mean, he has a whole chest full of ribbons. Wendell says John was deployed to Afghanistan in fall of 2013. He was in the Kapisa province in February of 2014 when he volunteered for a mission. John lost his life on that mission, but ended up saving the lives of anywhere between 200 and 500 American soldiers. The way it worked out, he had tracked a group of insurgents and they happened to be in a particular Ford operating base um, disguised as Afghan National Army soldiers that are embedded with our troops. By the time he alerted the teams, one of the um, insurgents came out of a vehicle with a machine gun and in a courtyard and, and two Green Berets were having a conversation. One was killed, then in, in just these nanoseconds, one was killed, four other soldiers were wounded, and then John was killed on the other end of the, of the arc. When he looks at images like this one of Afghanis so desperate to flee Taliban control that they're clinging to U.S. military planes, Wendell says he's frustrated and sad. My father spent 30 plus years in the, in the army. My brother spent 18 years in the army. My son spent two and a half years and gave his life to the U.S. Army, to this country. And I'm asking the difficult question, do we, are we, will we be trusted? He says the men and women who served with his son are asking the same questions. He tells us he's received calls and messages from them over the weekend and today, expressing a range of emotions. One is, how do we let this happen? What about John and Lonnie and Tico and Danny and then the names just go down the list? Um, how do we let this happen and let their legacies get tarnished by this? Which is not true, but that's, that's the emotion speaking. How did we as a nation not see this coming? How did we as a government not stand up for the Afghani people? The VA put out an urgent message today stating veterans from all eras 
reacting to what you're seeing in Afghanistan, you are not alone saying you might be questioning the meaning of your service. If it was worth it, you may be feeling moral distress. They say that that is a normal feeling. They have a list of resources um, they, they have given us. We've posted it on coin.com um, if you need to reach out. And Jeff, Liz, I know that you agree with this, and I, I think I speak for you too when we say that their service was not in vain and that their life certainly matters. Reporting live tonight, Jenny Young, Coin 6 News.